quickly because uh, the whole band in a box reaper uh, thing came up and I just wanted to demonstrate how simple it is. I did find um, something from six years ago, band in a box to reaper, but uh, both programs have changed till now. Um, so I figured I would just do this quick tutorial. I'm thinking about maybe doing some more how you can uh, actually enhance your workflow in Reaper and different ways you can do markers and regions and more advanced stuff possibly that you could do when you're in real band. But uh, for now, let's just uh, look at this. So basically, I started off with this demo here. Um, I added a loop and I added MIDI because it's cool to see one of the advantages of Reaper is you don't have to define the type of track, you could just drag and drop everything. So let me just show you really quickly how it's done and changes to one chorus that will be quicker. Um, all right, let's start with this. I'm going to go to master. You could basically drag things and drop them individually. What I'm going to do is drag the master into the drop station, that's the plus here, which will uh, give us more options. Um, let's first take a listen here. See that everything's working. Okay, lovely. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it individually. I'm going to take the master, I'm going to drag it to the plus. This will give me the option of doing separate files for each track, doing an MP3, which will uh, obviously take up less space because this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, I will also do MIDI because of the MIDI. And um, I'm not going to acidize right now. Uh, even though you could do cool stuff with that. So let's give this a shot. Now notice, once I do that, you will see that the MP3 and the MIDI quadrants, or sex quadrants, the six quadrants, uh, have turned orange. When everything is done, it will turn green. You will now look at the side and you will note that uh, individual tracks, as they are being transferred, they turn into S's. Um, it's going through rather quickly. Uh, I'm just going to pause this a second so you don't have to sit there and wait. Okay, that took maybe a minute. Um, now, if you see, both the MIDI and the MP3 turn green. Um, what I'm going to do is open the drag and drop folder, which is where everything came in. Now, if you've noticed, these MIDI, I have my default program to open MIDI, that is the MIDI icon. It has made a MIDI file of all the audio files. Um, just look at the, the date here. A good way to do it is to look at the time of the export. Now I am simply going to go like this. This is a new project. Oh, shoot. Okay. Before I do this, I just want to note one thing. When you're setting up your Reaper project, set your BPM here. Go to Project Settings. And Project Tempo. Do it like this. It's not, you can, you can rectify the issue afterwards, but we'll, this, this is the simplest way to do it. Okay, so we've got 90. And we go back to our, this. And we simply go, boom. Separate tracks. Look how beautiful. Okay. And you pull this out. This is a laptop. If you have a bigger screen, it actually... You hover over. This will tell you exactly what you have. And here, this is the whole project. Everything has been duplicated. 
So let's say you want to use your MIDI, let's say. Let's turn on the master here. Let's solo this. Okay, this this would be the guitar. Now let's say you wanted to insert VST plugins, which, you know, I'll go through some more advanced stuff maybe if there's an interest. Um, once you're in Reaper, what you could do. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Believe it or not, you're you're in Reaper now. Um, Document Mixer, remove that by pressing Control M. Um, what I would do also, like let's say, you know, this is the guitar. I would do track icon. I would do icons and colors. Um, this is a. I'm just gonna do this with the guitar, and then y'all can can do the the rest of them. Just follow the same process. Where's my electric guitar? There we go. Well, it's more of a strand sound. And then I would go to track color. Uh, where is it? Track color. Set track to custom color. Let's say green. Okay. Then you have green. Then you do the drums. And you do it with different colors. And then you just, it, it's easier to know what what's what. And uh, then you can create sends and everything. Do your automation lanes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's really that simple. So here's a little addendum. I just realized that I made a slight mistake. I said everything that was uh, MIDI, uh, uh, it did duplicate MIDIs for all of them. It did not. It did not do it for the drums, the piano, or the bass, because in these particular one, uh, for these particular tracks, you do not have the option um, to, to view the tracks in MIDI, if you look at this underscore under the guitar, the large underscore means that you have notation in tab. The um, melody, the half of a line means that you have regular notation. It's a piano. So yeah, you don't have tab for that. I have another video about how to force tab and band in a box. If you look at my uh, earlier tutorials. So I really hope I can splice this in at the beginning or at the end. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So again, basically the whole point of this addendum was to say that it will duplicate MIDI if you add in the drop station only for those that are underscored.